two, three, four, and action. Tony, we are talking off limits today, so I have to ask you, is is there anything that's off limits? And they asked me a question, I'll answer it as honest as possible. I'm not sure if they'll be able to show all of the answer and all of the language, but I will uh, do my best to uh, stay PC and, and answer correctly. We're here today in Colbos Boxing Gym. Yep. Is this a place that you, you feel most at home, most comfortable? It's a gym that changed my career. I'm very lucky I've, I've come here at the time of my career I did come because you've got to remember when I walked through these doors, the only thing I'd won was a British and a Commonwealth title at light heavyweight. And I walked through these doors with dreams and aspirations. I know I can win a world title, but it's all well and good saying it. It's another thing doing it. And I know he believed in me as well. It's quite a special relationship you have with Dave, isn't it? Yeah, I've known Dave a long time. It was actually Dave Caldwell who got me to turn professional. And the rest is history. The rest is history, I'd on say. The good, on the good days you thank Dave and the bad days you hate him, I guess. <laughs> it's all his yeah. fault. <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely all his fault. <laughs> Let, let's just go back to the early days. Do you, do you remember first walking to a boxing gym and what, what made you go? I started off kickboxing uh, with a guy called Alfie Lewis. Got to a reasonable standard, I think I got to brown and white belt, one belt before black. My dad always liked me boxing and my dad tried boxing. So we used to get in the, in the yard and, uh, and we'd do a bit of boxing. So I'd done bits of that. And then in the last kickboxing fight I had, I knocked a boy out. I was only young, I must have been about 11, 12. And I knocked a boy clean out with a punch. What was your just, reaction? Uh, Absolute joy, I was made up, I thought I'd won the fight, but I only found out they disqualify people for doing that because it's semi-contact <laughs> kickboxing. So I punched this kid, uh, knocked him clean out, that didn't go down well. And then I had another fight after that and, I, and then I broke this kid's nose with a punch and I got disqualified again. Alfie's words to me father was, I think he should go to a boxing gym. He's got an awful lot of talent with just his hands, forget it. His feet are good, but he, you know he's, he's, his hands are really good. Went to a boxing gym and uh, I think the thing that kept me in a boxing gym, I'll be totally honest, was I wanted to do something my dad couldn't stick at. I wanted to prove to him that I could do something. My dad was a hard man and I mean could really fight and I'm not talking about just in a boxing gym either, my dad could fight. And uh, I always looked up to him and I admired how hard and tough my dad was. I always wanted to show him I could be like that. And I think it got to a stage where I went to boxing gym because my dad had an amateur fight and he won his first amateur fight, then he had another one and a guy come out in the first round and just used a jab on him and just jabbed his head off. And I'm told the story goes something like my dad went back at the end of the first round, picked up the stool and went for the guy with the stool. So never again did he box or the tower did alarm him to box again. Something like that happened, I don't know what it was, but he lost his rag after getting his face jabbed off in the round. So I wanted to show my dad, listen, I can do this. And that's basically why I started the boxing. My mother never wanted me to box. My mother used to say, I'm too soft. She said, you're too nice a person to box. And the, the further I went on, the higher the level I got, she used to say, no, you should just stop this boxing. That might be fear for the son. What moment did it kind of click for you and go, do you know what, I, I can make something of this. I've got a talent, I've got a natural talent. I always knew I could punch. I was expelled from school. I, I, just before I got to finish through, through believe it or not, fighting. Uh, and I just, I always knew I could fight. I didn't think I could make a living until I walked into Rotunda ABC. When I met a guy called Jimmy Albertina, that's when I really believed I can make something of myself. Because if he believed in me, now this guy had made a, dozens of champions, dozens of national champions, and he, he, he paid attention to me. And Jimmy passed away very unfortunately before I think I just won the novice under 20s. If he believed it, then I know I can. If, if Jimmy Albertina believed that I was going to be that, then there was no doubt I was going to be it. And then I just... Have you I always had this kind of self-belief? Yeah. Has that always been there? Where, mm. where does that come from? Uh, I think I've got a screw loose. Being totally <laughs> honest, I just think I believe that much in myself that I actually shock myself. Do you think boxing has saved you from a, a different life? Yes. In what way? What do you think life would have been without boxing or not yeah. taking that path? Well, without, without boxing, you've got to look at it this way. I left school, no qualifications. Uh, I'm working on a nightclub door before I've even left school. And Liverpool, you know, can be a tough place to be raised in, especially the nightlife. So, you know, when you've got a father strapping a bulletproof vest on you for work, then, you know, it's work, but you've got to earn money. So, 
that's where that's that the, the norm for you is that it was the norm when i used to go to work on a saturday night in town it was yeah so you just get you just you take it in your stride at that age i want to fight the world so it was nightclub working on the door of a weekend uh monday to friday i'm trying to think i've had that many different jobs and it, everything's been to subsidize the dream of becoming a world champion boxer now if i never had that dream of becoming a world championship boxer i wouldn't have worked on the door I wouldn't have worked in the pillow factory. I wouldn't have been a lifeguard for 18 months in Everton Park and in Peter Lloyd Sports Centre. Uh, I wouldn't have met the people I've met. I would have found a way. I, I was always going to, I'll be totally honest, and I shouldn't say it, but I was always going to make money. No matter what I was going to do, I was always going to make money. And that was the most important thing when I was younger. But when I had me little boy, me first little boy, and I was with Rachel for many years, and I knew her since she was a kid, and she knew everything about me. She knew the bad things I was up to, she knew the good things I was doing, she knew the path I wanted to take with boxing. But when I had my first little boy, that made me put everything into, into context. That meant I could never go over to the wrong side of life and that meant I could, ne I could never envision going to jail. My father's been to jail twice, I've, I've visited my dad in jail, so I know what that's like. And I was never going to go down that road when I had my first son. If I never had him, I genuinely do believe I'd have went the same way as some made some of the mistakes my father made, uh, some of his friends made, some of the people who have died of me. I'd, I'd have definitely made some of the mistakes, and I don't want people to think, oh, he's talking a soft story or so. No, I'm just I'm a product of my environment. That's where I'm from. There was no way to get out for us. I'm a kid with no, with no qualifications, with no expertise besides fighting, and and so I'm I've literally come from. I've fought my way out of, of what I was supposed to be. That's, you touched on there about family and, mm. and, and is that your inspiration? Because you're obviously very successful as an amateur, you turn pro, that's always been the constant, right? Yeah. Are they your motivation? When I had the, me, me first boy, definitely. Up till then I was a different person, in all honesty. Until I had Cody, I was a different person. I was, I'd say, a lot more horrible. Uh, I'd say a lot more cold. Uh, I don't know yet until I had the, the first little, my first little boy, I'd say I, I wasn't the nicest person. So you'd have lots of regrets from them early years, but I would definitely say once I had him, I became a soft, the wrong word to use. People say I'm soft, but I, 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 and it is the right word to use, yeah. When I had him, I became a lot more soft. But before him, I was a, uh, I was horrible in, in many ways and done lots of horrible things I'm not proud of, but it just that was life, that you are what you are, and then that's the early days. In the early days, a lot of people wrote you off, didn't they? The whole world. Did, did, you, read this, did you read what they said about yeah. you, and, and how did that make you feel? Well, in the early days, there was no social media, so in the really, really early days, we used to go on things like boxing forums. So did you actually go on them yes. and you searched your name? Sad old, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, but I was only an amateur boxer in these days, and there was a, a boxing forum called Warrior Boxing. There was one of them. There was Box Rex before them. And uh, at the time... Is there anything I, that sticks in your mind? When I started playing around on these forums, I was still an amateur boxer. And what sticks in my mind was I was working for the council. I was trying to be a trainee accountant. And uh, in all honesty, I, I, I'm not the brightest, and I was just messing around with it. Uh, I'd go to college, and I never had a single clue what they were telling me. When I used to go on the computer and I was at the council, when I was supposed to be filling in forms and paying certain schools or filling in spreadsheets, I would be going on boxing forums. <laughs> and search yourself. And not, not search myself, but I would be looking at what these guys were. And these guys would be talking about amateur boxers. And bear in mind, at this stage, I'm, a, I'm an ABA champion. I'm the heavyweight champion of Great Britain. I'd won the Four Nations and, and they're like, that Bellew is just a raw sluggard. And I was going on there saying, hey, Bellew, punch your head in if you want to see Bellew. And I, and I look back and I think to myself, oh, no. But it's just, it's all part and parcel. There were forums in them days. And I look back and I do laugh to myself. But I, I've just never been one. Would you say you've got quite a thick skin? Yeah, I've got skin like a rhino's backside. You're a man, though, in terms of personality. You do divide opinion, don't you? Of course. I think a lot of people close to you would say, likeable, very approachable, funny, caring guy. But yet you, you do seem to, to divide the queen out. Believe, Why is that? Because they believe what they see on camera is real. Anyone watching this interview, you're seeing 
10 seconds of my life. You listen to 10 seconds of me, I'm probably the softest person you could meet, but I'm also, I've also got a bad side to me. You get on the wrong side of me or you do me wrong, then I'll never forgive. Once you've done me wrong, I will not, I will not forgive. Ever? Ever, no, I'm stubborn like that. Does anything get to you? No. Nothing? No, so don't get me wrong. If I'm having a bit of a bad day, I think, and I do have bad days, the same as everyone does. You'll have them, I have them, yeah. the coach has them. Everyone has bad days, Not no one's life is perfect. There's no point in dressing it up. Uh, Who gets you out of those bad days? Definitely Rach in the house, definitely, 100%. I have me bad days when I'm on my own here, in this hell hole. So when I go back to the hotel, they're my worst days. So that's the best way of, of getting through it, is going home and seeing them. But I understand the, the need and the reason why I need to be here. I need time alone because when I come here for the first four weeks, I've enjoyed the peace and quiet. I've enjoyed the not doing, I shouldn't say this, but not, it's bad. This is why I say I feel selfish for carrying on fact. I've enjoyed not doing the school run. I've enjoyed being away. And I, but then after but four weeks. But I bet weeks, you start to miss that. Yeah, after four weeks, then I start to resent it a bit. After four weeks, I'm, I'm annoyed that I'm doing FaceTimes with the kids on the phone. I'm annoyed that. I've missed another assembly. I've missed my little boy getting a certificate. So that's why when I say this has to stop at some stage, I've I've been doing this for 20 years and I've been selfish for 20 years. Uh, I've always put myself first and that's not fair. You will never interview another fighter and he will say that to you. I've never abused my body. I've never took a drug in my life. Part of me doesn't care. Honest to God, a part of me doesn't care what happens. I know I'm and I feel like I'm doing this because it takes away from the real problems in life. One more to the camera, please. One more face in the front, please, gentlemen. Sorry. <laughs> Superstar. I am. Superstar. No. Superstar. No, no, no. Megastar. Superstar is not the best one. I think you understand. I am not a star. Megastar. No. Yeah. We see. The stars are turning up. He's not a star. November the 10th could be a defining moment of your career. It will be. One of the biggest defining moments the was probably May 29th, 2016, mm. when he won that world title at Goodison yeah, Park. The best. What do you remember about that night? The greatest night ever. Nothing can ever beat that. If I knock Alexander Usyk out in 20 seconds on November the 10th, it still will never touch that night. Because? Because it was Goodison Park. Because it was a place I've grown up in. I've grown up on like Ladder Street. Season ticket the year after year. Uh, Roll KK 147, my season ticket seat. Does it feel a little bit like a dream now when you go back? Yeah. So I have never, I've, never, I've never just sat and reflected on what I've actually done. I still go to games and so that night at Goodison is one of the greatest nights I've ever had at Goodison in my life. And today football fans say that, and they're not boxing fans. And thank whoever is watching over me that I got up off that floor and that nose held together for a little bit longer so I got to achieve my dream. Nothing can ever compete with that. It doesn't matter what happens. Huh? That was an amazing night. You went on and moved up to heavyweight and, and <laughs> faced David Hay, a, a, a great rivalry. You've had some fantastic ones in your career. Yeah. Nathan Cleverly. <laughs> Are they real? The rivalry with with the Cleverly one was, was was personal, that was real, that was honest, the open and on, that was real. The one with Hay was real, but to a certain extent. I, I never needed to get personal with David. David got personal with me in the first fight and that's what broke him. When he got personal with me, he lost his concentration and he lost his mind in that first fight. And then for the second fight, it purely just came down to who's the better man now. And, and I just showed that there's lots of guys who have beaten who are better fighters than me, but they don't do the things I do and they don't have the mindset I have, and that's what gets me where I've got. A lot of people doubted you mm. going into well, both, both of those fights. Mm. Did you ever doubt yourself? I always doubt myself. I remember myself. you saying to me once you had a bit of a moment before the walk-on with, with David Hay. Mm. I always doubt myself. Nice, you can't lie to yourself when you look in the mirror. Not, 
there's only you and you can't lie to so of course I had thought to me head, this guy can knock me out of course I do I, no, now you will never interview another fighter and he will say that to you but uh, that goes through my mind all the time of course you can lose but the biggest thing with me is I am a realist and, and, and I look at real I take on board what they can do and it was the same with David I knew what David could do I think that's one of my strongest assets that I can accept that these guys can beat me like I said and, and that's what allows me to to be able to put in place the plan that Dave puts in place that I can follow it through because I understand, I know how and why I can lose. Obviously, in the time between the first fight and the second fight, oh, you yeah. had the most horrendous, yeah. suffered the most horrendous family loss. Mm. That was the worst. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard. Did you, did you ever now. feel like... Quitting, yeah. Yeah. What made you go on? Uh, I have to. So there's nothing else I could do. And I have to, I have to carry on because you just stop. Do you feel like there was kind of two roads you could have taken? Uh, yeah, you, you kind of self-destruct a bit, but there's nothing you can do because nothing I do can ever bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> and it too makes me sick. But you've gone on to achieve some amazing things, and and. After that fight, was it a, a, you know a, a real moment for, for you, for your family, everything you worked for and, and got through, and I think the whole nation got behind you on that as well. Yeah, but it doesn't change. So it doesn't change nothing. So a fight doesn't mean anything. In all honesty, the best thing that happened was that the December fight didn't happen. Yeah, it's all about timing. Because if the December fight would have happened, I they just gone in and started slowing. So when the fight did get delayed, you just, I don't know, you just find a way. And that was the worst thing. So you still don't get over it even now. You just, you just day to day. Learn to live with it and cope with it. You try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a grand job and you've got a massive, massive opportunity to shine on, on November the 10th. Yeah. Yeah, just another fight. So as I say, part of me doesn't, like I said to you before, I feel like I'm being selfish uh, again, and a part of me doesn't. A part of me doesn't care. Honest to God, a part of me doesn't care what happens on November the 10th, and I feel like I'm doing this because it takes away from the real problems in life. But and then I'll go home and I'll sit and I'll look at the pictures and I'll study boxing and I'll think about doing great things like legends have done before and, and holding all four belts. So I don't know. That's. The, you just do things to take your mind off it. And that's all I can do. Are you going to dare to be great? <laughs> I'm trying, trying my best. So is it this this last fight? It's supposed to be, isn't it? My coach tells me that he'll leave me after this. I need it to be. On November the 10th, I shouldn't say this on camera, but I, I need this, I need a hard fight. The worst thing in the world that can happen is if I chin this fell in two rounds. That is a disaster. I need the fight beating out of me a bit. So I shouldn't say this, but I, I half want a hard fight. I want to wake up on Sunday and think, I can't take this no more. That's why I want to wake up. And, and the last thing I want to do is wake up on Sunday morning after like the David Davy match and think, I feel like I haven't even had a fight. If it is your last fight, though, yeah. what does life look like after boxing? Does, does retirement scare you? Mm, used to doesn't know more makes me very I know what's coming now because I've adapted myself so I have I have a really good property portfolio in place uh, which the kids are gonna thrive from that that makes me happy it makes me proud of myself uh, I, I surpassed me me goal a long long time ago so I'm very happy about that uh, I'm part of a very successful security company going forward uh, which is already a great success and we, we're doing really well with that. I'd love to be able to be in a position where I'm trying to help dictate my kids' future. How do you think you look back on your career? I fought anyone. And, and I, I got told that a long time ago of an amazing fighter called Andre Ward. When we were doing the movie Creed together, we were in the truck and he said, you know the one thing I respect about you? And bear in mind, I didn't even think he would know who I really was. He said, the one thing I respect about you, you fight anyone. And for him to say that to me, 
I should have knew then I've won. I, 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 as long as I'm remembered as a fighter who will fight anyone and will give everything he's got, never knows when he's beaten. That's my greatest asset. I will never know when I'm beaten. So finally, November the 10th, what happens? How does it go? I find a way to defeat the monster. I find a way. I don't know how. I don't know when, at what stage in the fight it will happen. But I'll get to him. I will get him. I will get him. And he will, he will feel something he's never felt. Let's just see if he wants it as much as me. If he does, you're in for the best night of fight ever. You're in for the, one of the greatest fights you'll ever see. Uh, this is already, I'm informed, the richest cruiserweight fight in history. Well, you know what? Wish you the best of luck Thank on November the 10th. Much. And it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you off limits. Thank you. Fingers crossed this is the final one. The sun sets down on a cold day. The rain still hits on my window panes. I'm from Liverpool, a place that struggled from day one. I'm from a fighting town. I'm a product of my environment. I'm trying to do an interview. Tony, finally, what, what's your best bit of advice, boxing advice, you'd give someone from your career? Boxing is not a sport. Boxing is not a hobby. Boxing is a way of life, professional boxing. And I have lived this life for 20 years. I've never abused my body. I've never took a drug in my life. Do I have a drink now and again every blue moon? Yeah. Make a show of myself as well when I do it? Absolutely. But I've lived this life and I've lived... Lived it well? Yes. Just live it. Give it everything you've got because there is no second chances. As a fighter, you only get one chance. You get one opportunity. So you fulfil your dream and you fulfil all your opportunities because it's all down to you, the fighter. Live the life.